What is going on guys? My name is Jeffrey. Welcome back to Epic Reactions. And today we're checking out One Direction Mistreated. William Payne exposes what really happened to them. So this video was DM'd to me a couple of times and then commented a bunch. So we'll be checking it out finally today. Of course, I can't like verify or think. People attack me if the videos I watch, okay? I don't know. I just watch what is requested. So if something's wrong, I'm sure you guys let me know. Just don't 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 attack me so uh yeah if you're new to the channel definitely subscribe one click the like button join my page channel if you want to support you further follow me on twitter and instagram and yeah everyone's having a great 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 day uh yeah let's do this Ian Payne fans called out one direction management for mistreating the band before i get into the tea i just want to put out a disclaimer <laughs> please do not send any hate to liam Payne, psycho records or anyone else involved in this story this video is simply meant to report on the no, news no i'm tweeting i'm tweeting at liam Payne right after this video i'm and tired of it an tired of the it situation the tea on October 15th, artist Jessie Ware interviewed Liam Payne on her Table Manners podcast. In the beginning, Liam opened up about how his success with One Direction impacted his solo career. It's just super difficult. It's hard to drop those standards once you've had. I mean, when we first released Strip That Down, it did what it did. It just scared the shit out of me, to be honest, because I had already done it all once. And then we landed on this massive thing and it just kind of came out of nowhere. And it scared the out of me. He later shared details of his experience being in One Direction and how they're stuck. So watching like Harry Styles like documentary too, uh, yeah, like him making the first album, it's like it seems like they all went through the same thing. Which I'm, I'm not happy they all went through the same thing, but it's like it's interesting that they all went through like when they're making their first music, them all being like kind of scared and like feeling just weird about like making that music i'm sure they'll be okay now but i don't know maybe all of them feel that same way still and probably we're just like uh but yeah because it's like you're so big you're at the like harry Styles said it best like you're all the way up here and you have to like realize you're never gonna be there again like you'll never no matter what because bands just do better than so artists it's just it's just you know that's just how it is but yeah it's it's weird. It's, I'm, 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 I'm not happy that they all, that are like all feeling that way, but I'm like, ha I'm like, I'm, 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 I don't know how to express it, but it's like, I'm glad that they're all feeling that way, and it really shows that like, that they're like understanding of it, and they're like not like happy that. I don't know. I don't know how to express that. It sounds weird. It sounds weird, but I'm happy all five of them feel that way and not just like one of them feel the way. It's like I'm glad that they're all kind of like going through the same things as each other. Like, like they should, you know? Uh, that sounds weird, I don't Edgel know. was a mess. I used to get off the stage and then you'd be that high off all the endorphins, whatever, get horrendously drunk, get up at like five o'clock in the afternoon and then do it all again. But we used to come off the stage because at the time, towards the end of it, when we were that busy, it was like, you would. We'd write the album in two weeks. He See? added that his management team would sell tour tickets before the band even wrote the album. Think about the, okay, the music they have is already good, right? It's good, right? Imagine the music we would have if they weren't constantly touring and they're able to sit in the studio like they were for Made in the AM and take a break. Think about it. Think like that's not their best work. That's literally what we were getting is not their best work and it is still that good. Think about album. it. The problem we had is that Jesus they used to sell Christ. the tour before we'd written the album. So they'd sell the tour and be, all right, we've sold the stadiums. That's he said so the level crazy. of fame he experienced scared Think about him the pressure. and that he felt self-destructive because I knew it was going really well. The one thing I say to people is getting into doing all this sort of stuff. The success is the bit that will you more than anything. When it's not successful, you're just kind of working harder at it depending on the person you are. But most of the time, the successful bit, it just scared the out of me and I wanted nothing to do with it. There's no stop button. Like you got no control over your life. And that's why I lost complete control of everything. Yeah. And that was the last two years have been trying to take control of life. He also said he lost his love for singing for a long time and that the band was 100% overworked. I had no personal life. I learned nothing about myself. Like, I remember getting into therapy one time and the guy was like, what do you like to do? I didn't know. I haven't got a clue. So I just sat there in the chair going like, what do I actually like? I just lived so long as this like reclusive pop star who's afraid of people who just stayed inside all the time. At the end of the interview, he shared whether or not he was relieved that One Direction broke up. It was really scary at first, but I needed to stop, definitely. It would have me. Later that month, Liam appeared on the Jonathan Ross show and shared details about One Direction breaking up. And it's just getting so hectic, like we would literally be at award shows and never, we'd win the most awards on the night and then never see the after party. We'd already be on a plane going somewhere else to do the next show to go somewhere else. And just by the end of it, it's like, you know, we were 
kids' mouths. So it was, it was yeah. pretty crazy. After the interviews, several fans said they were heartbroken and changed their mind about wanting a reunion. I've loved One Direction since 2010, but I don't want them to get back together anymore. Like, their mental health is so much better now, and they seem a lot happier. Like, I mean, I'd love for them to get back together, but I'd rather them not for their own well-being. See, I think, I don't know what, let me know, please, if anyone has an understanding of this. If they did get back together, does Psycho have the right of them being able to control control their tour and everything? Because I think if they get back together, they'll have their own control. That's why I'm not too worried about them getting together and like there. Because they'll, I believe, right, they would have their own control. Because I'm sure, I don't know if they're signed to like a amount of contracts together or if they're signed to amount of years. Because I don't know if the five contracts was the five, because they usually, it's usually five but Taylor Swift was signed to like eight. I don't know if she ever re-signed. See, let me know, please. I don't know the details, but I understand that like, I, I hope that if they do get back together, which they don't have to, of course, that they'd have like control and be able to do it their own way, you know, do like a concert like two times a week, you know, just very light schedule, do it over, you know, a year and you're good, right? I don't think they'll, you know, but... That'd be nice. Being. It was all the management. I mean, come on. They were teenagers. They weren't guided right. I'm glad he's being honest about the fact that they were overworked. I even noticed the amount of work they were doing, and it made me uncomfortable just to watch. One Direction were so much more controlled than any other traditional artists. They put out five albums in five years with four highly successful tours. They never got a break. There are so many teenagers that got messed up by the industry. We're very lucky that all five of them made it. Some of them brought up former One Direction member Zayn Malik and said the public owes him an apology. The same people who didn't believe Zayn, who was honest and said these things five years before, are now saying here, aw, poor Liam, I am feeling sorry for him and all. Oh please, you double-minded, it wasn't just him. His anxiety got worse, and he started to starve himself while on tour because of how busy they were. Now Liam and other boys are saying the same things. Y'all, went down behind closed doors. For context, let's dive into One Direction's history. In April 2010, the One Direction members met for the first time through The X Factor, a British talent show. They were still teenagers at the time, ranging between 16 to 19 years old. Each of them auditioned- By the way, whoever linked this, this is a very good video, actually. Like, the way she's talking over it and the editing and the flow of this, this is actually a really, really, really good video. I respect it, actually. This is, this is good video. This is I, whoever, I forget who was on Twitter. And the people come, this is good video. ...for the boys category, and were told that they weren't strong enough to go through to the live shows individually. Instead of sending them home, singer and guest judge Nicole Scherzinger suggested that they form a group at the X Factor boot camp. The group was given two weeks to get to know each other and work on their music. While they gained popularity in the UK, they finished the X Factor in third place. In January 2011, the band reportedly signed a £2 million contract with Psycho Records. Psycho was founded by record producer and X Factor judge Simon Cowell and was acquired by Sony. In February 2012, One Direction released their first American single, What Makes You Beautiful, and went platinum four times in the US alone. That platinum? same month, they oh received an award for the best British single at the annual Brit Awards, Platinum. one of the biggest events in the music industry. In March 2012, the band made history with their Up All Night album, which entered the US Billboard 200 chart at number one. According to City News, this makes them the first British group to ever debut at number one in the US with their first album release. Not even the Beatles or the Spice Girls were able to accomplish You know what's interesting about like British things is like British things, they're usually confined to like britain right but if like something british is really really big it like explodes like i see the same thing with harry potter like i've never watched i've never watching the harry potters but it's like if something british is really good it'll tend to like explode and just be bigger than anything else in the world but most things are like i don't know how to explain it, but yeah it's like it's like that it's like one direction like they're british but then like if something really good is british it'll just be better than anything else like that's i don't know uk just goes big uk goes big yes. between 2013 and 2014 the band received several more awards at the annual american music awards brit awards and teen choice awards in march 2015 one direction team announced that zane was leaving the band on facebook after five incredible years zane malik has decided on to leave facebook. one direction niall harry liam and lewis will continue as a four piece and look forward to the forthcoming concert Concerts of their world tour and recording their fifth album, due to be released later this year. Zayn says 
says, My life with One Direction has been more than I could ever have imagined, but after five years, I feel like it is now the right time for me to leave the band. I'd like to apologize to the fans if I've let anyone down, but I have to do what feels right in my heart. I am leaving because I want to be a normal 22-year-old who is able to relax and have some private time out of the spotlight. I know I have four friends for life in Lewis, Liam, Harry, and Niall. I know they will continue to be the best band in the world. Within 24 hours after the announcement was made, there were more than 3.5 million tweets about Zayn leaving. Yeah, I can imagine Twitter that day. Emergency? Zayn Malik has left the band and I'm having trouble breathing today. Me Twitter, all day. Dude. Zayn Twitter. is leaving One Direction. This God is the it, end Twitter. of them. This is the end of me. This is the end of the world. <laughs> God I don't damn think it, I'm going to be happy again. Oh, no. always in our hearts, Zayn Malik. The Manchester we find these... News also reported that workers made more than 200 calls to employment law experts requesting compassionate leave. In August 2015, The Sun reported that the band decided to go their separate ways to focus on solo projects. A source told the publication, The guys have been together for five years, which is an incredible run for any boy band. They fully deserve to have at least a year to work on their own projects. There's absolutely no bad blood between them, and they're all 100% behind the decision. It is definitely not a split, and they fully intend to get back together at some time in the future. That seems to be the end of the situation for now. You know what would be really dope, though? If they, like, really... If they all, like, came together and made, like, an insane documentary that was, like, you know, that just was, like, all this behind-the-scenes stuff, and you just sat down, make it two hours, and just have, like, a really good just sit down you know a really good sit down where they're able to like make it on their own terms and you know get it would be dope it would be dope so what's the big issue record producers have a long-standing history of expecting boy bands to become million dollar making machines at the expense of their health and well-being in an interview with the Evening Standard, Zayn revealed that management choreographed his every move, including his statement about leaving One Direction. Management took over the minutia. Days were structured so that you didn't have time to think because you were concentrating so hard on work. I lost my bearings of what time it was, sometimes what day it was. He later described One Direction as a machine and detailed the band's rise to fame and rigorous touring schedule. I think the back-to-back -back performances toward the end when we were in stadiums, I wasn't really ever able to enjoy the experience. The machine had gone too fast. Liam followed suit by admitting that he shouldn't have been able to do as many shows as the band did, and that he would drink before going on stage to manage the stress. Going out and putting that happy smile on my face and singing the songs, honestly, sometimes it was like putting on one of those costumes, going out there, and underneath the costume, people don't really see what's going on. In 2010, journalist and critic Philip Henscher called The X Factor a ruthless money-making machine and revealed the talent show's lucrative sponsorship deals, upwards of $75 million. He highlighted that having artists compete with each other is one of the main ways they can gain success with the public. It's clear why the industry likes it. It is predictable, though not infallible, and it creates an enormous revenue stream out of the whole process of development and promotion, so that whether the eventual single sells or not hardly matters anymore. Anymore. He also highlighted that producers know that their audience wants a story, and that every single person that watches The X Factor is a target of relentless selling. On November yeah. 4th, record producer said- it's, it, it's like, it's always been weird to me. That's why I really like watching them, is because like every, every person that seems to go up there have like this like weird and like, not weird, but like this like, in, like insane, insane story, like insane. That's like, you know, that once you just, uh, you just grasp them it feels like just like they're literally promoting them throughout through the story that they're telling and it's like a tragic story it's always like a not always but it, most of the time it's like this tragic terrible story and i'm like i can't like it feel i feel so bad it seems like they're being used for that story right like it's so oh, i hate it because it, like, it performs that emotional connection with the viewer to that person and it's always just this tragic story and i'm just like dude why are you i hate airing that out to like so many people but you know it is what it is announced that he'll be launching a new show called x factor the band in an interview with the sun he said his business is getting bigger than ever before and that he wants to find a new band to compete with the k-pop industry k-pop is ruling the world this is a show to find yeah, a band to launch uk pop it's more than winning a record contract it's starting a new music You're not gonna he find added a new that band. every competing group will be put together by him just like one direction little mix and fifth harmony Maybe you can go to like the hype house and <laughs> maybe you can get like Addison Ray put a put a put a put a band together TikTok band. 
<laughs> no, there's no dude. I think uh, it's possible, but I don't honestly. I don't think we're gonna see like a huge ban for for a while, for a long while. Like, I don't know. Be like, we have K-pop, and K-pop is very like ruling the world. I don't see like a, like an American or like a, like a a white person band. I guess you could say it, to be like a top band for a while. I don't. Know. I just don't. I just don't see it. I just don't. You know, unless like they come out surprise. But it seems like bands, I don't know, in American and like Western culture, I think putting like them together, it just doesn't, it doesn't work where like Asian culture and like South Korea, like South Koreans, like them work, BTS, like they have a, I don't know, like we'll be behind the scenes because I know their contracts are pretty rigorous also. They just have a different, I don't, it's just different. They're, 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 I respect them a lot. They, I have a lot of respect for them. So like they put together and they're like really, really good to each other. It's crazy but uh yeah i don't see i don't see another boy band passing wonder i don't think it's gonna be like that for a while i don't see it there's no way i think most artists want to just be solo i just don't i don't see it but this Good luck, isn't Simon. the first time boy bands have been preyed upon by the rich and powerful. Here are some other cases. In the documentary The Boy Band Con, The Lou Perlin Story, the former Backstreet Boys and NSYNC members detail how their rise to fame became one of the largest Ponzi schemes in American history. In the early that. 90s, record producer oh, and dude. con artist Lou Perlman formed both bands like and manipulated them into becoming rivals. Similar to One Direction, most of the members were teenagers at the time, ranging between 13 to 24 years. Years old. Look at In girl, the Justin of the documentary, the former members detailed their intense boot camp schedule. We were working our asses off, day in and day night. Lou had these gondola hangers for his airships, no air conditioning in there, it was hot as balls. We would learn how to dance, we would do choreography, and we would learn how to sing on a microphone without being out of breath. Probably rehearse six to eight hours a day in there. I'm surprised none of us ever got heat stroke. You're talking Orlando, Florida in August. Co-founder of Teen People, Lori Majewski, said no one worked harder than the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and they never got a day off. In the rare case that they did, they were scheduled to appear at photo shoots. She also said how much money the band's management team made back then. It was cha-ching. I mean, the amount of money that was being made, you can't even imagine because we don't sell records like that today. You know, most people today, they buy one or two records a year. Back in the teen pop period, they were buying five a week. According to reports, Backstreet Boys is the best-selling boy band of all time and has sold 100 million albums. In comparison, I NSYNC has sold 28.8 million albums. Both are listed as two of the top boy bands of all time. Despite reaching worldwide success from selling out stadiums and arenas, the Backstreet Boys weren't fairly compensated. Most of the money made went to their record producer, Lou. In their first four years Have as a band, his company made it. about $10 million in revenue. The band only received a cumulative $300,000, oh, with no AJ way. revealing in the boy band oh, that I'd be some of the pissed. members of the band could barely afford their rent. In oh, sync, I'd weren't be fairly pissed. compensated either, and were given a mere $35 a day. After two years of touring and promoting their first album, they received their first checks and were shocked at the amount. I open up the envelope, I see the check, and oh my gosh. It was only $10,000? I couldn't believe it. I it's like crazy to him that it's $10,000, so I'm thinking, you only got $10,000? <laughs> the check was $10,000. And not to sound ungrateful, but when you compare it- Oh, he's upset that- Okay, yeah, he deserves to be upset. Okay. I thought he was happy that he was getting- to, Okay. Yeah, dude, what was $10,000 going to get you, buddy? For how many hours we had to put into this group for years, it didn't even touch minimum wage at all. Along with being swindled, the former band members were expected to attend every appearance. I like the word appearance. swindled. We would go door to door to every single solitary radio station and do every radio interview. We would sing a cappella on the radio stations. When we released our first US album, things started to really pick up, and in doing so, it wouldn't go away. In an interview with Rolling Stone, former Backstreet Boys member Brian Luttrell said he felt pressured to put his responsibilities to the band before his health. I delayed surgery twice because of the tours. I mean, the saddest thing is that I scheduled open heart surgery around my work schedule. It was like nobody really cared or felt that it was important because the career was moving on. He added that eight weeks after- I think, uh, I think the way they get you to, the way they get you to like, like stop and, and not do your stuff is like, it's, it's like they like, which I've, I've fell for it too. Also, they like pawn it off as like making seem like they like put like, 
they plan it and put like the uh, like the management puts it like against like they make it they manipulate the other members into like making it like them against each other like they really do put them against each other in situations like that like they get it in their minds that, oh look at him he's taking this time off right like he's sat like he's not you know and they put them against each other where it's it's the it's the management's responsibility to be like, okay, we're gonna stop this for a little bit so he can do this, and it's their responsibility. But they like start, they like pin it, like they pin them against each other, and then put pressure on them, and then like the band starts having friction, and the person doesn't want to do anymore because he feels bad because he doesn't want to like sacrifice the band's time or whatever. And then it's just like this long, long thing, and then they'll like hold off on it forever, and then they'll it's same thing for like NFL and like NBA and like just sports in general. The sports teams that'll happen a lot, like they'll. The, like really like pin where it's like the person's like at the top it's his responsibility to stop it and make sure that everyone is taking like it is there it's just like a workplace right a workplace it's their responsibility to be able to get replacements or someone to fill in like there there's no one should be feel bad for that i'm sure he they felt bad too like i'm sure everyone because I'm, I'm sure a couple of them had uh surgery right surgery he performed on stage and that oxygen tanks were kept nearby at all times in case he needed to use them years later he was diagnosed with muscle tension dysphonia a condition that causes the, the muscles group. around the voice box to constrict the backstreet boys and nsync later sued Lou for nsync the decision way. was made after former nsync member jc Chazé asked his uncle to take a look at the band's contract. The deeper they dug, the worse it got. And it was just this webs upon webs of robbery. He said, this is one of the worst contracts I've ever seen in music history, and y'all need to try and get out of this. In the end, both bands were able to break their contracts with Lou, though he was still able to receive one-sixth of the Backstreet Boys' earnings. When Damn, he passed bro, away, this dude the was New York Times reported- That dude was literally a Backstreet Boy. That's the, that's the mystery Backstreet Boy. That dude was making as much as the five. That's insane, dude. That dude was a Backstreet Boy, basically. Almost all of the artists Holy. that he worked with were young men, and some accused him of inappropriate behavior. This was reportedly common among other bands. According to E! News, oh, wow. the Jonas Brothers, B2K, LFO, and New Kids on the Block allegedly experienced the same pressure and mistreatment. Overall, what Liam and his former band members went through was heartbreaking. They were teenagers when they- I think that's something that's uh, not talked about enough also, because I'm not like trying to- like pin it against you know but i think uh society we i talk about uh we talk about young women being taken advantage of as we should right that's very that's very deserving but i think what our society society also has this thing where we don't really talk about like young men being taken advantage of because like we always see them as like oh they should be you know they they can take care of themselves or they can do this they can do this they can do this and you know men can't be taken advantage of where they very very well so can and it shows in videos like this like of course like we're also you know they're young they don't they don't know i'd be the same way if i was them you know you're just doing you're trying to live your dream so it's like you know we have like this uh thing against like men being able to speak out whether it be like sexual assault etc and it's, it's pretty sad like it's really 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 sad what like and they they can't like if they talk if they speak out like one they don't want to like look weak because like we have this standards for men to like not be able to have to talk talk about their feelings or you don't want to speak out for whatever reason it's very it's very concerning and like they'll never it's hard for them to get their help uh, a lot of men well, well people in general have that issue with getting help uh but yeah it's it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. They met each other at the X Factor boot camp and were pressured into working nonstop. According to child development expert Nancy Carlson Page, the younger a kid is when he or she gets into this business, the more likely it will be damaging because their needs are not met. The basic needs of childhood have nothing to do with working or the entertainment industry. A young child doesn't even understand what the entertainment industry is. More often than not, management is overly focused on perfecting their band's look, voice, and every move. This leads to members having to work non-stop and risk damaging their mental and physical health. What do you think about this story? Do you think boy bands should make a comeback and that the industry needs a change? Let me know in the comments below. It's weird. I think, uh, I think K-pop, like, I think that's, it's in for a rude awakening, right? I think they're, they're like, I don't know the history but behind K-pop exactly. I'm not like a historian, but I think there's like the whole them exploding the way they have like you see in you know bts blackpink nct which blackpink's i'm pretty sure their contract is just horrible where they go through but they're in a rude awakening for 
something like what has happening in America's America that happened, you know, 20 years ago, 1990s, 80s, it's going to eventually happen and it's going to get exposed to the world. You know, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's going to where I, I don't think Korean artists or Korean bands have like been their Their contracts are really bad also. So it's going to be like, it's going to, it's going to be like a rude awakening in the neighborhood. The world's going to see like, Oh my God, you know, as it gets bigger, I think the world has it like pan in. It's starting to like it, but you're going to see just like Americans, like it's, it's going to be bad. So yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see American groups anytime soon. There's just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. There's just no reason to, I mean, people, people, maybe, I don't know. I just don't know where you'd get people try it still kind of, but I don't know where you'd really find a group like that. I don't know. I really don't know. You'd have to like have friends that like, you know, I don't know. It's very hard. You're not going to really see that anymore. Yeah. Let me know. Uh, yeah, it's, this is hard uh i hope you know hope they're all doing well seems like liam payne his i'm pretty sure he's under i don't know what management i think he's under psycho still i don't know i'm not sure but i don't know he it's apparently like he he goes through some stuff still like still where i think uh the other boys kind of have a bit more freedom but uh yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know music industry it's 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 a weird thing and i don't think we'll never we'll really never know the behind the scenes it's really hard it's you know it's kind of impossible to know so yeah, that's gonna do it for the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click the like button, check my Patreon if you go support channel further. Everyone has a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.